the holiday season, what is on your 2024 NASCAR wish list? The holidays are right around the corner and everybody's making their wish list. What they want, what they want to see, all the good things like that. Listen, I'm not Santa Claus. I'm way too tall, way too skinny to be the fat man that lives at the North Pole. I'm better off being Slender Man than I am Santa, but I am here to talk about what's on my 2024 NASCAR wish list. And I'd love to hear your comments as well, so definitely drop them below what you would like to see in 2024. For me, there's a number of different things I'd like to see, and I've got my festive fireplace and tree behind me. I'm wearing a festive shirt. It has it says Berry Christmas on it. I don't know if I can get that close for you without having to put my ugly face right into the camera, but the 2024 NASCAR wish list. What's on it for me? Number one for me, my most wished for thing is more horsepower. Now listen, I know Santa Steve Phelps is not going to give us more horsepower the same way my parents wouldn't buy me the eight mile soundtrack or the Leisure Suit Larry video game. Both smart choices by them because I was way too young to understand that. At one point my mom was like, they say the C word on that album. And I spent literal days with my friends in the basement trying to figure out what that word was. And now as an adult, I completely understand what it is. And I understand why my mom wouldn't want me to say that. And I can understand why Steve doesn't want more horsepower because, well, actually, I don't know necessarily, but I know we're not getting more horsepower. Give us a test of more horsepower though. Go out there and run a 900 horsepower car and then just be like, here's the data. This is what it looks like. Show us a little bit of video. If not, a team will likely leak it and we can all, you know, continue to clamor and drool over the wish that we had that, the dream of having 900 horsepower, but at least give us a test. Go out there and try it. Just appease the fans. I think Dorman Verclear mentioned that as well. Just, just do it. Just to make the fans, just to shut them up. Regardless of what like Toyota wants to do, since they uh, historically have been the ones that maybe were the one uh, that didn't want to have the higher horsepower. We'll get into that in a different video at some point, but for me, more horsepower, that's number one on my wish list. Whether we get a test in 2024 or they're like, hey, in 2025, we're gonna go up to 750 or 800. Eh, great. Anything's better than what we currently have. And granted, I think the intermediate package right now is pretty good. Uh, the short track package is the lacking. Same with the road courses. Number two on my wish list is two new additions to the NASCAR Cup Series schedule for 2025. Go international, finally, so we can check that off the list. NASCAR, and I guess people do consider Canada to be international, it's not. It's just Minnesota North. It doesn't really matter. It's not really that going international. Sure, they got to stamp your, your passport, but at the end of the day, it's still Canada. So go to Practice France in Montreal if you want to. Go down to Mexico, the Mexico City races in the Xfinity, then Bush or Nationwide Series. Uh, we're always fun. Or get real crazy and go to Interlagos in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and race down there because that would be insane. Granted, a lot of teams, Brett Griffin thinks that Chicago is unsafe, which everybody is totally fine. He, he will never set foot in Sao Paulo. I mean, every year, Formula One teams get robbed down there. But great racetrack. Do that. I also think that we'll see a new street course be added to the 2025 schedule, whether that's Denver or Seattle. I'm not really sure NASCAR wants to get into both of those markets, but I don't expect Chicago to return in 2025. I know some fans are going to be like, go back to Rockingham, go to Chicagoland, go to Kentucky. I'm fine with all of those. They can figure out how to work out deals, specifically with Rockingham, since it's not owned by SMI or ISC. That's a little bit harder of a sell there. They're going to have to do a lease program, kind of like what SMI does at Coda. That's going to take a little bit of work. Uh, so yeah, I'd love to see that happen. And then kind of just building off of this, what the future of the clash is and where that race goes, because this is likely the last time we'll see it happen at the LA Coliseum. Uh, so hopefully we see it move on to another cool venue versus like going to the Daytona Road Course. That was never that great. Number three on my list is Brad Keselowski finally winning a race as an owner driver. Let him get to victory lane. Let him wear the roses around his neck and they pat him like he just won the Kentucky Derby because the man finally needs to get back to victory lane after being absent for two years, ever since he took over this RFK project. He's resurrected RFK like it's a phoenix in Harry Potter. He's got them back to their winning ways. Chris Buescher won three races last year, or a year, the year before that, he won a race, four wins in total. Brad finally needs to, you know, get through and get that done. He's done a great job bringing that company back to being competitive in NASCAR. People don't look at Roush anymore as like, oh boy, that is the, uh, the downfall. That's the blueprint of what not to do with a race team. Brad has now brought it back and he instilled a lot of Penske in it, right? Which is fine, but yeah, we'd like, I'd like to see Brad do this. Um, but 
what can I say? It's worked out really well for him. Bringing in the Stage 60 program this year with Cam Waters, which we'll get to in a little bit. Very exciting as well. So get Brad back to victory lane. Let him finally get a win as an owner-driver. Be the first owner-driver in the Cup Series to do it since Tony Stewart did it. Ricky Rudd's done it as well. Alan Kowicki. Uh, but it's not something that happens very often anymore. So get Brad back to victory lane. Number four on my list is an improved short track and road course package. NASCAR continues to take little baby steps to it. But they need to just take a big swing, make it better weather, and it's going to be aero. It's going to not be a narrower tire because that's a lot of work. I get it. It's not going to be higher horsepower because that costs money. It is going to be an aero tweak of some sort and a, probably a tire compound tweak of some sort by Goodyear. Make these tires wear out. What we saw at the fall Martinsville race was great. It laid a ton of rubber down. I mean, it basically turned those concrete corners into asphalt. We need a tire fall off, though. That's more important than, well, not more important, but just as important as laying rubber down right there. So make that happen and just try to improve that short track package. Desperately figure out a way to get rid of shifting. Obviously, the best way to do that is to have more horsepower, increase that RPM range, that way we don't have to shift, but that's a whole nother story that they didn't want to test at Phoenix, which is very frustrating, but I get it. It's still frustrating though. On top of that, make the road course package better as well, because right now the road course package, it's too good. Make these cars harder to drive. Right now the cars are, in a sense, too easy to drive. Everybody's just basically turning qualifying laps. And while it looks cool at Watkins Glen to see the top four cars running nose to tail, just absolutely beating these cars around the racetrack and getting the best lap times they could, they can, it doesn't really, it's not really conducive to good racing. So figure that out. Number five on my wish list is move the championship race away from Phoenix after 2024. 2024 will be the fifth consecutive year the championship race will be at Phoenix. And in that time frame, exactly zero, zero races, that's Spanish for zero, Races have been exciting. There's been no memorable moments from the Cup Series championship races at Phoenix. Sure, Trucks and Xfinity have delivered one, two-ish, you know, memories that have come out, come out of it, memorable ones. But for the Cup Series, not a single thing. So move it to somewhere else. Move it to Kansas, Darlington, Homestead. I don't really care where they move it to. Just move it away from Phoenix because what we're getting right now from Phoenix just isn't a good race. And granted, what we saw in the fall Phoenix race was exponentially better than what we saw at the spring Phoenix race. Unfortunately, the fall Phoenix race just still wasn't very good. The racetrack's just not good for racing anymore, not for stock cars at least. And uh, it's really frustrating. But NASCAR sunk a ton of money into it, so that's why they keep going there, which I get because you got to make your money back. It's still really frustrating. What are we at? Number six on the list. That might be backwards. Number six on the list is a three-race championship decider. No more of this one-race, winner-take-all championship race. Have three races. Whoever has the most points at the end of those three races ends up winning the championship. If you're not going to give us 36 races, whoever has the most points at the end wins. If you're not going to give us 10 races, whoever has the most points at the end wins. Give us three races. Because right now, the one race winner take all has not set up a game seven moment at all. There's been no excitement from it. We pretty much know who's going to win the championship well before the race is over. Having a three race championship decider at least lets drivers put their skills to the test, right? Have an intermediate, have a short track, and then you can either have a road course or a super speedway. I don't really care what you do, but at least have three different racetracks for these guys to go out there and try to compete on and win a championship. It will make it seem less gimmicky, right? World Series, decided with a seven-game series. Same with basketball, same with hockey. The NFL, of course, has Super Bowl Sunday, but that's because they beat the crap out of each other and they can't come back the next night or two nights later and play again. Get that. Have a three-race championship. Just go ahead and make that happen. Eliminate however many people you need to in the first round, whether that's five. You have 16, five, take you down. You'll have to figure it out. I don't have, I don't have time to do the math on the fly right now. Number seven on my list is for Chevy to finally figure out who is going to be the successor to the Camaro in the Cup Series. Whether that's going to be Chevy or whether that's going to be GM pulling them out and putting Cadillac in and running a CT5 and the CT4 and the Xfinity Series and the Cup Series, I'm not really sure, but I want them to decide by the end of 2024, and they're going to want to decide by the end of 2024 because with Ford and Toyota both introducing new cars, they're going to want to have a new car really soon. If not 2025, then definitely 2026. It'll likely be 2026 
either way. But don't put the Malibu in the, in the NASCAR. That's my biggest wish. Don't put the Malibu in, right? That doesn't exactly instill excitement into anybody other than the salesman at a used car lot that's trying to sell it to somebody with bad credit. Don't do that to me. I apologize if you have a Chevy Malibu. It's just not my favorite car on the road right now. Honorable mentions. Things I'm just excited for, not necessarily wishful of. I am wishful that we will get to see SVG and AJ Allmendinger absolutely duke it out on road courses in the Xfinity Series this year in the same cars, prepped out of the same shop. That should be must-watch television. Very excited for that when Coda rolls around in the spring and we get to see that for the first time. I'm also excited for Cam Waters to come over and run his three-race series, which hasn't been announced yet, with RFK in that Stage 60 car. That'll be exciting as well. Same with Brody Kostecki coming over as well. More drivers trying out different disciplines, I'm definitely a fan of. Outside of that, it's our last year with both, with only, I guess, Fox and NBC. And hopefully we get Kevin Harvick having a really good debut season for Fox. Hopefully he brings the level of professionalism that we're all hoping that he does to the Fox booth and makes it a little bit less sideshow, calms Clint's whole little shtick down, and makes the broadcast more enjoyable. If they haven't gotten rid of the cartoon so, so help me, I will drive to Charlotte in those NASCAR studios and rip them out of the computer myself. So let me know in the comments. That was a great way to end a cheery post about the holidays. Don't know. Regardless, let me know in the comments what you're hopeful, what you wish to see in 2024. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.